So in this session, I want to talk about anxiety and how um, the difference between situational anxiety and chronic anxiety, um, having an anxiety disorder. What anxiety is, is fight or flight. And fight or flight is a very important part of our human makeup. It's what told us that um, when we're getting attacked, we should either run or we should address that threat. It's the thing that keeps you from walking out into the street when cars are coming. It's the thing that tells you, you know, the house is burning, I gotta get out. I mean, it, 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 your blood pulls into your, um, your organs and you start suffering like tunnel vision, um, sounds become decreased. Um, there's a lot of natural things that happen because your body's trying to protect itself. So that's what anxiety and panic which is like an extreme anxiety um, is. And each have their own set of symptoms. And the thing is that they're real symptoms. It's not something you're imagining. And it can, it can develop and present itself in many different ways. And it's not the same for everybody because everybody's you know physiology may be slightly uh, different. We're gonna have similar symptoms, but overall you may be suffering something that I don't and I don't cover in my videos. Um, so I always dealt with a form of anxiety, having a high stress job, but we, I was able to train out of that. So when you're in train, when you train in certain situations, you kind of autopilot and you get done the tasks. So you're no longer in danger. Um, but when I started dealing with a fear that was not tangible, it wasn't something I could fix, at least something that I could fix in a in a time that I felt comfortable with. So that's where uh, a lot of this began for me. Um, I was accustomed to walking to, and I use this as an analogy, I was accustomed to walking up to the cliff's edge and kind of looking over into the chasm and, and, and seeing how things would play out for me. I role played situations in my head on a regular basis. But in this instance, the fear that I had was over was overpowering and I fell I fell off the cliff and at this point I started realizing that I was so fearful and even though there were so many things I didn't understand about the thing I was afraid of I realized that I was being irrational in a lot of my thoughts you know that saying you're not crazy if you know you're crazy you're not really crazy even um, I would say that to myself, like, you're not really losing your mind because you know you're being irrational. But it went from these moments where I was feeling anxiety and I was feeling irrational to where I totally bought it hook, like, hook line and sinker. I, I felt like I was losing all control. And, I, and I've, I was very fortunate in the respect that when this started happening to me, my life kind of slowed down a little bit so I could focus on me and my mental health and getting me better. So a couple months back, I had a potential exposure with HIV, unknown exposure. Um, and I didn't know as much as I thought I did about the virus. The fact is, is that now in 2019, it's not what it used to be. I mean, you can live a full life with HIV. As it is, I take like 13 vitamins a day. I mean, if I took one more pill a day, I'm gonna live my full life, right? Live, try and live a healthy life whenever you can, you know. Um, I had friends that I talked to that had been HIV positive and they were happy, healthy, living full lives. And it was interesting because I was so afraid, not necessarily of the virus, I think more of destroying this personal image I had of myself, how I saw myself. Um, I was so afraid of destroying that, that being diagnosed HIV positive would destroy that. Uh, I think that's where a lot of my fear stemmed. And please understand, I'm trying to figure, figure all this out still, right? I'm still working through this. This is not an I'm better video. This is a I'm working through this process. Um, so having little knowledge about the virus, having little knowledge about what anxiety does, um, how serious 
uh, you know, long-term anxiety and depression, how it wreaks havoc on your body. Having little information in those regards, I, it just compounded on the anxiety because things started happening to me physically that I didn't understand. And I started falling to um, searches online constantly. I was searching online constantly. And, and I'm not saying I'm completely free of that yet, but um, I still do it. So the CDC says after 21 days, you, you test negative. You should test positive if you have the virus within 21 days. Within um, 40 days if you're like a late bloomer. But a conservative number is 90 days that the CDC pulls, puts out. So if you test negative after 90 days, that's considered conclusive. You conclusively don't have um, HIV. But most clinics it will tell you, if they're not worried about liability, that after 21 days, um, you're, you come back negative, you're probably gonna stay negative. Um, so that's something of, and now necessarily when it comes to symptoms, this is the other thing, symptoms, they don't have to show themselves for up to 10 years. So someone could be HIV positive and not even know it for up to 10 years. But that's not test, that's without testing. That's, that's symptoms that they may receive some symptoms here and there, not realizing that they're HIV positive for up to 10 years. So that was something else I found out. Um, but that doesn't mean that they would test negative if tested for HIV. And that was something I misunderstood as well. So at the onset of this, um, I was worried that, you know, this could not show itself for 10 years. I didn't know how I was gonna go on essentially with my life living like that, um, living with this fear. So I got tested at, I think 24 days, and this is before I knew all of this. And, and really what happened was is in the beginning, I had, you know, I had a physical done. I had been, I had some family with some medical issues that they've been dealing with. So work, it was just high stress. So I took a test at this point, not knowing the days. I took a, tw a test uh, at like 24 days and I tested negative. I went back again at like 40 something days. I tested again, tested negative. But after the first test, I had like three days before I got results back. And in those three days, I did the bulk of my internet searches. And that's where the anxiety became panic. And I started suffering panic attacks. Um, at night, I was having sweats. I was, my palms were sweaty, night sweats, dry mouth, um, could not sleep. Uh, my body was shaking. But I didn't even know the symptoms of anxiety and panic at this point. I, I did not understand what those symptoms were either. So um, my body felt, you know, tingly. I just, I just felt off, and I was certain that I was HIV positive at that point. And then that tied those those symptoms that tied in with the internet searches I was doing. I was, I was in my mind, I was dying right then and there. I was dying. My life was done, though at least the way I knew it. Came back negative. Um, I start, I get into my head, all right, start to rebuilding, I'm, I'm negative. But I still didn't understand the, the time frames. So uh, a friend of mine was telling me about his, his brother. And that just re-engaged, you know, this happens like two weeks later, uh, re-engaged my anxiety. I mean, and it, it hit hard and hit fast and I went um, totally susceptible. I was feeling all these things and I realized that uh, he suggested to me, hey, just go get tested again. At this point, mind you, after going to my doctor, I didn't understand. He had told me I could close the book on in a couple months, you know, focus on my mental health, and on a couple months, we can we can look at it again if we feel we need to. But that left like a lot of do doors open for me. That was not a lot of information, and the stuff I was finding online was not r helping me. So I, I went and got tested again. I was negative again, and I was like, finally, I could put this behind me, right? Um, and then but I still didn't have the information I needed to understand the time frames and the windows. So I'm like, this thing, I, uh, I misunderstood the 10 years. Um, so much was just wrong um, in how I perceived it. Um, and then I had to talk to another f uh, person who had told me that one of the symptoms was like burning skin. And I'm like, can you, by that evening, my skin was burning. 
Um, come to find out that uh, later, unfortunately, a week later, that that's a symptom of anxiety, you know, chronic anxiety, uh, which I was suffering. I mean, I would wake up from sleep with my heart racing. I would, um, I would, I will, I do, I still do. Um, the smallest uh, hypersensitive to my body, the smallest pimple, blemish, anything, and I'm off to the races. My heart is racing and I can feel it. Um, so my concern was that at some point this was gonna start affecting my work. Fortunately, like I said earlier, this was a slower period um, in my in my career, things were just slowed down for me a little bit. So um, I was able to, to really focus on making myself, helping myself get better. Um, so I get tested again, and at this point I have a couple screenshots from things I'd found online of other doctors that kind of help, help me get through the day. So at 105 days, I test again, and it wasn't until after this test that I find out, you know, the, the day's chart, you know, 21, 40, and uh, 90 days. So it's like 105 days in after potential exposure, and I'm negative again. So I'm negative again at 105 days, and now I'm dealing with something called pseudo-AIDS, or HIV phobia, AIDS phobia. Um, I find this out, again, this is something I find online watching YouTube videos because I don't believe any of the results. I mean, I'm dealing with physical, actual physical symptoms, like from my skin burning uh, to um, excessive acne. Now I'm starting to get acne. I'm like 40 years old and I'm starting to deal with acne again um, on my forehead and my hat. I think it's called faticulitis. Um, it's where the, the hair follicles get clogged. Uh, some eczema, which I don't, I never really dealt with. But every time I, I would deal with the physical symptom, and mind you, my heart was racing all day. So fatigue is a byproduct. I was feeling dizzy. I would have dizzy spells. Uh, not vertigo, but just dizzy spells where I felt dizzy. Come to find out the chronic anxiety is explains all of it all of it to include the skin the the adrenaline is pulling all your fluids to your 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 blood to your core which means your skin is not receiving all the blood it needs on top of it you can be you can create um, autoimmune deficiencies in your body you can get sick as a result of constant uh, anxiety so I didn't realize it at the time so even after my 105 day test where I was negative I was doubting the fact that I was HIV negative I was Google searching everything uh, HIV rash. I can tell you I've looked at hundreds of, H hundreds of photos of HIV rash because I was comparing everything on my skin but I don't have any flu-like symptoms my lymph nodes weren't swollen um, I felt tired, but I felt tired because I'm constantly beating my body up emotionally. My heart is working hard. I started tracking my heart rate during sleep using the Pillow app, and I would wake up with a heart rate uh, 117, 120 plus. Um, and just throughout the day, I would suffer from that. And I, st I still am to some extent uh, not as bad. I started combating a lot of it what got me through up to 105 days and up to today is I, I meditate twice a day. I started doing Tai Chi that I learned off of watching YouTube videos. Who knows if I'm doing it right, but it does help on my breathing techniques. And I have started precluding a lot of things that are natural stressors in my life. I just won't get into certain arguments or discussions that I feel are not, not worth it. I definitely put so much more of my life into perspective. But the pseudo-AIDS, HIV, AIDS phobia is a real thing in itself. And from some of the videos I've watched and some of the testimonies I've heard, people have lost years of their life to this. Uh, it goes as far as to where fears of using the same toilet seat or kissing that they will contract the virus. 
Um, but you can live a full life with HIV based on all the research that I'm talking to my friends. Um, live a full healthy life. So I realized that my fears were so irrational and this is why I was suffering from um, HIV phobia because I realized that I could live a full life and I was not necessarily afraid of the virus. Another content, um, concept was that I was so ashamed of something I could have done that put me in this situation that I felt like I needed punishment and I was looking for some form of punishment as a result. Spiritually, I had to start working on myself again, working on my relationship with, um, working on my relationship with God, building my relationship with my family. For so often, I felt like I didn't need anyone and anyone that I had in my life was because I chose to have them. I realized that that was furthest from the truth and that this impression I had of myself for so long was just a lie. It really was. Um, didn't mean I was a bad person. I never saw myself as bigger than I am, but I didn't, I didn't appreciate the things that I should have uh, in a way that I should have. So I've worked on a lot of that. Um, and there's other aspects to my experiences which compounded on all of this. Experiences I had that just compounded on the situation. Um, I realize now that I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. And for so many years, I just thought those are guys or those are people that did not emotionally prepare themselves for the hardships they were gonna experience. And that's why they suffer PTSD. I felt totally prepared to experience the things that I had experienced and yeah here I am, here I am fighting this battle. So, um, HIV phobia is a thing, if you didn't know. Um, it's, the feelings are completely unrealistic. And even now, after this test, I still doubt that the test was valid sometimes, even though I recognize um, the things that I feel now are a byproduct of my anxiety. Um, unfortunately, my skin's not burning like it used to, like it was at one point. Um, it would burn, but there would be no visible rashes. And that's what really screwed me up, I think, is that when I actually started developing uh, conditions on my skin, like the acne and the eczema, that really messed me up. Because I was like, oh wait, so before, those were just things I felt, but there was nothing there. Now it's something actually there, it's HIV. Um, but again, I have no other symptoms. And every image of the HIV rash that I looked at looks like nothing that I have going on. I mean, it's just like eczema. Um, I have a spot on my back and a very small spot, maybe like two inches. And then um, on my shoulder blade, lower part of my shoulder blade, and then behind my right, um, my right arm. And the doctors said both of them are heat stress related. And um, he said that my finding, my last test was conclusive as well. Um, so with that being said, I'm, I'm gonna bring an end to this video, but I will come back and talk more about the anxiety, uh, the depression, um, the things that I've done in greater length to kind of help me through this time. Uh, big key points. If you feel you've had an exposure, the only way to know if you're HIV positive is to get tested. Um, it's a scary thing. It is scary to go do. Um, but know that it's, you know, you have 24 days, 21 days, 40 days, and, and, and 90. That's the, your mark. And that's CDC, and again, that's conservative. And, and generally, the percentages that are associated with that in regards to these tests, like they say the test is 98 point whatever percent accurate. The tests are so sensitive, that's accurate in the way that you can come back with a false positive, not a false negative. That was also a big thing for me to understand and still kind of wrap my head around. So when they're saying that it's 98.9% .9 accurate, that means that, that whatever percentage is left, that has to do with 
you coming up with a false positive, not the other way around, because they're that sensitive and they're designed that way. So again, that's it for this video and we'll get back together later.